Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We are here to disrupt the way you run, operate, and look at your business. Today, I have a super fun episode, and we got a clickbait title, which I am all for seven quick ways to inject cash into your business. And of course, on the screen with me is an amazing guest who I have the pleasure of knowing now. I was on his show a couple of times, and now he is a guest on mine. So first and foremost, Josh, welcome into the show. Man, I'm so happy. And I'm glad that I have a clickbait title because I definitely don't have a clickbait face. <laughs> I don't either. And usually <laughs> people always say, you know, you have a face for radio, right? Well, mm. it, the same thing goes for podcasting. And then I decided to make a video podcast because I clearly misunderstood <laughs> what they meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Yeah. And here we are. So if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you are listening on any other platform, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of this absolute ridiculousness. But we will promise to help you grow your business that at least we will deliver, even despite how we look. Anyway, Josh, <laughs> enough about us. Um, seven quick inject, seven quick ways to inject cash into your business. Before we get there, I want to hear a little bit about you. I know you have an expertise in sales and marketing. You host podcasts, plural. You do a number of different things. Can we get a sense of who you are in the world? Yeah, great question. So uh, I've worked with more than 5,000 entrepreneurs over the last 15 years. And that sounds like a lot. Some of them I've worked with for five years. Some of them I worked with for an hour. And there's a whole lot of in between. Uh, but the, the thing that I noticed, though, is there are some trends. When you see that many people trying to make it with their business, you notice some things that they have in common. And, and I, as far as I want to answer the question about who I, who I am, I'm an observer. I look at things and I try to interpret them as a kid. I was a very quiet kid. I was I was the quiet one in the corner that was never acting up or making too much noise. Never had a lot of friends. And so I would watch and I would just try to understand what made people tick, what made them do the things that they did or say the things that they said. And I always thought that that was a bit of a, a detriment because, well, why am I not just out there experience, experiencing it? And what I realized later was it's actually a blessing because it helped me understand things and people in a way that most people just don't because they don't take the time to, to dig past the surface level. And so when I started working with entrepreneurs, I'm always trying to figure out like, well, why are you where you are? Why did you make that decision? Why is this person successful? Why is this person not successful despite everything that they're trying or saying that they're doing and why is it not working? And so who am I? I'm a guy that tries to figure out how to answer questions like tough questions. And over time, when you try enough, it's not like I'm really that smart. It's just that anybody that has enough reps is going to be a pro at something. And so when you try to answer the same question enough times, eventually you're going to have a pretty good answer. Uh, and, and, uh, and I'll, I'll say this, uh, one thing that I've learned, if I were to just summarize the main lesson that I learned in working with 5,000 different entrepreneurs across 30 plus different industries, I mean, everything you could possibly imagine, uh, I've worked in crypto and cannabis, junk hauling, law firms, agencies, coaching companies, travel agents, real estate, like literally everything you could possibly think of. And here's what it is. It all comes down to this. Successful entrepreneurs pretty much do the same things over and over and over again. Unsuccessful entrepreneurs pretty much do the same things over and over and over again. And once you realize that, then you start to understand nothing else really matters except for doing what works. And if you're doing what works and you repeat that process, you're going to be successful. If you're doing what doesn't work and you repeat that process, you're not going to be successful. And, and if, I, if I walk away from a decade and a half of experience here with no other lesson, 
that's a big one. If I can impart that on anybody that's listening right now, if you're not where you want to be right now and you're constantly busy and you're working 16 hours a day and you're stressed out and you're like, oh, I wish I had time to do this or this or this, but I'm just putting out fires. Relax. You're doing the wrong things. Just do the things that work. Just do what works and you'll be fine and do that over and over and over again. I mean, should we stop the episode now like that? <laughs> Does anything else? forget about the seven quick ways to inject cash? <laughs> no, I do want to get there, but that's yeah, that's that's so crucial to understand. I see I see hustle culture and mainstream and social media kind of putting putting the the doer hat on entrepreneurs and and saying you have to hustle and you have to do more and do more but you know what what we teach and and what you just said is the 80 20 rule it's like you're there's some things that you're getting a massive result from but you feel like you just have to do more to be busy wherein mm -hmm. most people they could do like two hours of work a day and get the same result no matter how bad the result <laughs> so maybe we need to improve the outcome yes but the inputs don't have to be so crazy. They don't have to be the 10, 12, 14 hour days. I, I think that's phenomenal advice. And it's interesting that that's what you said about observing successful and unsuccessful people. I love that. It's, it's one of those kind of things that sticks out to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you've heard uh, about successful entrepreneurs. Hey, I've got a routine. You know, I just do the same things over and over and over again. We've all, we've all kind of like internalized that. And so when I say that you're like, yeah, yeah, of course that makes sense. But then when I say it's the same for the people who aren't successful, then you're like, crap. <laughs> well, which one am I, you know? And, and, and then you start to realize like, here's the thing. This whole, this whole thing started, I, I, I start I launched a podcast called the do zone. And I, I wanted to create this movement because I am in a war against the word busy. I think mm -hmm. it's a four letter word. It's an enabler. It's a euphemism. Whenever you say the word busy, you can pretty much replace it with unfocused. In fact, uh, challenge for anybody here uh, watching or listening. I actually, whenever, whenever I... Uh, type something on my phone, I set an autocorrect in the text replacement. So whenever I type the word busy, it actually replaces it with unfocused. <laughs> like it literally, like, I don't know if you can see this, but it literally yeah. will autocorrect to unfocused. If I hit the space bar here, watch, I'll do it right now. Boom. Like I can't even type the word. And, and that's one of those things where like, Hey, if you're saying you're busy all the time, just understand you're using that as a shield for not doing the things you need to be doing. Because if you're that busy and you're not where you want to be, you're doing the wrong things. Mm. Do something else. Yeah, that's that's a lesson a lot of people need to hear. And thank you for slapping the audience in the face. I <laughs> I built you up and then you came in here and you're slapping people. <laughs> Josh is cool. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> you're unfocused. Go home. <laughs> You're unfocused. You're not doing the right things. Just stop doing everything. But hey, you know, to, to, to tell the truth, like, here's the thing. If you really think about like the economy of energy that you have available, if you're not doing the right things, just don't waste the energy. And like, you're better off doing nothing sometimes. Yeah. If you're everything that you're doing is wrong and you're just filling up your calendar with garbage. You're better off just taking that time to think and figure out, well, what is the thing I can do that's actually going to move the needle? Hmm. Yeah, that's huge. And I think that is a good reframe for, for today's conversation. Of course, we're talking about the seven simple, simple ways to inject cash into your business quickly. Now that you've slapped everybody around. Now, listen, on this show, the listeners know I usually meet the guest about three minutes before I hit record. And I love that because we get to just break things down in real time. I get to meet them, get a feel for them. You, I have the pleasure of knowing in advance. So I know you are an amazing person, an incredible entrepreneur, and you have skills and tactics that can actually help people get cash very quickly. I'm glad you slapped them first because <laughs> now that you've been slapped, you've been disrupted and we've woken you up a little bit. Now let's figure out with that mindset of, okay, maybe I'm doing too much. Maybe I'm using the, the B word in the wrong way. How do I actually get cash in my business 
quickly. I'd love to dive in, Josh, if you're ready. Where where do we start with this conversation? So we have to start with acknowledging the the first part of the statement. Successful entrepreneurs pretty much do the same things over and over and over again. If you're under $2 million right now, maybe even up to five, but at a minimum, if you're under $2 million in revenue right now, your only focus should be bringing cash and sales in the door. If you're focusing on anything else, then that's why you're not there yet. Uh, core values are really important. Uh, SOPs are really important. Uh, hiring the right team and getting your company culture, all that stuff's really important. And it should exist. But if you don't have enough cash, you got problems. If you've got healthy sales and cash flow, you can solve, you can like just point the cash at whatever problem you have and just pew, 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 pew. You can like get rid of the problem. It's gone. And so focus on bringing in cash and sales. And if you're doing that over and over and over again, your success is just a matter of time and effort. And so one of the ways that I like to engage with my clients is let's get some cash in the door now. I have found 100 times out of 100, Brandon, that when I talk to a client and I say, I, uh, this is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to inject quick cash into your business. I have found zero of them uh, to be upset with that. <laughs> I have found zero of them to say, no, no, man, I don't want money. I need like whatever other thing, you know, like nobody's upset about that. Right. And everybody's happy when it comes in, because now when you've got cash, you've got options, you've got choices. And you can grow your business however you want, because now you got something that you can point at a problem and annihilate. So let's get into what that is. Uh, and I've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and I went and I did an analysis. And uh, I, tech, I started looking at all the most successful campaigns that I had with all those clients. Not everything was like super successful, but a lot of them had some big wins. And I started boiling it down and I realized, hmm. Well, a lot, of, a lot of them, I did this. A lot of them, I did this. A lot of them, I did this. And I was able to narrow it down to just seven templates, seven basic frameworks for how to get cash in your business right away. There was not eight, only seven. And so here they are. It's an acronym called PRECISE. So I call it the PRECISE method. Okay. And each letter stands for one of the seven ways. And so I'll give them to you right now. P is process improvement. I'll go through what these all mean here in a moment. So we've got process improvement, reposition, egg, conversion message, innovative offer, secondary sale, elixir. Process improvement, reposition, egg, conversion message, innovative offer, secondary sale, elixir. So you Those had me with most of them, and I love that you have an acronym. We have an acronym, Harmonious, above my head. If you're That's watching, right. um, you got. I had most of the letters, and you could spell it, which is fantastic because I couldn't. Egg. You said egg. I did say egg. We're gonna dive into this in just a second. Before you dive in, I'm gonna put your website on the screen. I hope you're taking notes if you're listening. But if you're not, go to factor1.io. I'm sure Josh has a resource for this exact method for you. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait to hear you unpack all of these, including the egg, Josh. That's right. Please. <laughs> and, and so if you want the complete training, I've, I, I put together an entire training on these seven different methods. Uh, and you can go to my website. Uh, there's, there's an opportunity to learn about the slingshot. And the slingshot is what I do to help entrepreneurs slingshot past where they are so that they can get into momentum. So you can go to factor1.io right there on the homepage, and there should be a place where you can access this training. Um, or you can book a call directly with me and we can talk, whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, and uh, one last thing, you can reach me at JT literally on social media in case you wanna have any questions. So if you wanted to watch the entire complete training, I have that available on my website, but let me go through it really quick. So a process improvement is a change in the way that you operate. So you're adjusting an SOP or a standard operating procedure or, or something that, that you normally do and you're making it more efficient or more effective, okay? An example for that might be 
the way that you handle your phone calls or the way you handle your sales process. For instance, if you take a call and then you have to send it to a setter and then the setter puts it with the closer and then they have to send an estimate and then they have to send out a proposal. And then there's like all of these choke points that that the prospect could just bail out. We want to look at a process like that and see, well, how can I improve this process without doing anything else, without changing what I say, without changing what I'm selling? But how do I adjust the process so that I can increase my conversion rate and have a better chance of getting sale? Maybe I cut out one of those steps. Maybe I shorten one of those steps. Maybe I automate one of those steps. Okay. So reposition has to do with making you a more premium option. It also could mean that you're changing industries or changing markets. An example of a reposition could be a roofing company. There's in Texas, there's probably like 47,000 roofing companies. Uh, and what distinguishes Tom in the truck from Pete in the pickup? Well, nothing. You know, they both drive around and they knock on doors and they got hammers and shingles. But there are certain customers who would rather do with a company that is treating them with white glove treatment. And they would rather pay a premium for that. And if you can reposition your company as a more premium option, you can basically charge a higher amount of money for the same service. And that brings in cash for you. Okay. So egg, what's egg? Egg stands for everything's got to go. Uh, this is this is your blowout sale or your deal or your special offer on some sort of existing product or service that you currently have. And so everybody has an existing offer or service. If you're in business and you've made a sale, that's your existing offer and service. And so there's something that you can do that's going to make that offer stand out or more attractive for a short period of time. As an example, let's say uh, you uh, sell um, aquariums. I'm just pulling that out. Let's say you sell high-end aquariums and they're normally like $2,000. I don't know how much an aquarium is. And uh, you're, they're not selling very well. And so what I'm going to say is for every aquarium purchase this weekend, I'm giving away uh, you know five free fish or something like that. And that's a way to you for you to put together an offer on existing product to where you can sell more of it, you're making it a higher perceived value or offering it at a discount. Conversion message is the words that you use to get people to say yes to you. Now, I, I want to let you in on a little secret. 90% of the time, your message is not compelling enough. 90% of the time, my job is done by helping you fix your message. There's all these other things that are cool. But if I can get your message right, it almost solves every problem. And so that's hugely important. Innovative offer is a completely new offer that you have discovered that your audience has an unmet desire or need. As an example, uh, I have a client, I mentioned that I have a client that's a junk hauler. And uh, he hauls uh, junk from apartment complexes like mattresses, old couches, appliances, that stuff that the dumpster companies don't pick up. And what we realized was there was actually a need for another service. And we didn't realize this until the property manager asked. And so we were on property. They're picking up the stuff. And uh, we, we trained the reps to just ask, well, hey, is there anything else that we can do for you or anything on your mind? And they said, hey, do you guys offer trash valet? Which is basically uh, the, the tenant's leave their trash bags out at the door instead of walking into the dumpster and somebody comes and picks it up. That's trash valet. Uh, it's a very high margin uh, service and uh, not a whole lot of people have it. And the sales rep on property knew we didn't offer trash valet, but thought quick on their feet and said, yes, we do. Let me get right back to you. And they came back and we crunched the numbers. We made them an offer and they accepted it. Uh, and that was something that did not exist before. And it created recurring revenue for this company that, that boosted their revenue and gave them secure revenue moving forward. Secondary sale is an upsell or a cross sell. What an upsell is, is when you purchase something and you're offered something else. Hey, would you like fries with that? That's an upsell. What a cross sell is, is when you're cross promoting with two different companies. So uh, T-Mobile, if you sign up for T-Mobile, we'll give you a free iPhone. That's a cross sell, right? And so those are innovative ways to kind of 
combine what other people are doing and other people's audiences or the fact that you're already at the point of sale. Hey, you're already here. You know, just for a few dollars more, you can have this too. Yeah, why not? It's an impulse decision, a gut, gut kind of decision there. And then finally, Elixir is your secret special sauce. It's what puts you into a category of one. It's something that nobody else does and nobody else can lay claim to. And so putting those all together, we've got the word precise, process improvement, reposition, egg, conversion message, innovative offers, secondary sale, and Elixir. One of those things, if you deploy it properly, will create a huge influx of cash in your business. Just to give you an idea, most of my clients who deploy this, they're seeing 2x, 3x, and even one of them got 5x their sales in a 90-day window just by deploying one of these things. So you could 2x, 3x, or 5x your sales in about a 90-day window by getting this right. I'm not going to say that's going to happen to you. What I'm going to say is I've been able to help my clients do that in the past. And so it is definitely possible as long as we get it right. That's awesome. So yeah, if there's no other compelling statement than that, go to factor1.io, check out the full training, like Josh said. But I, so I want to ask, you said, do you want, if you even do one of them, is there a method or a framework you go through for all seven? Do you attack it in a specific order or do you sit with some people, do you do it all at once? What's the process there? Here's the thing. Well, we have to solve problem number one first. And problem number one is usually not which of these methods should we use. Mm -hmm. Problem number one is typically I'm stuck and I don't know where to go. And we have to solve that problem first. Um, many entrepreneurs I speak with don't have a clear goal. They don't have a clear destination in mind. Let's fix that first. And once we fix that, then we can reverse engineer the plan of what we do to actually get to the finish line which will probably be one of these methods. Um, but it's kind of like problem number six, you know, like let's figure out where we're going first. Let's figure out why we haven't gotten there. Let's figure out what we've tried that hasn't worked. So we're not wasting our time on that. And let's get real clear and just focus on going in one direction towards one result. And every time we do that, we win. Every time we try to splay our focus in five different directions, that's when we stall out. It, that's great advice too. And that's something that I've noticed from observing the unsuccessful side of entrepreneurship is you say successful and unsuccessful do the same things over and over. That's right. Unsuccessful people, one of the things that they do over and over is constantly switch what they're doing, the activities, the goals they're chasing. They have shiny object syndrome, whatever you want to call it. There is no clear focus They're They're busy to use your word. Um, so to kind of, Bring this episode full circle here. If you're that's that's my biggest takeaway and what I've been preaching. We're recording this early in the year. That's what I've been preaching for the first two weeks of the year. Is just stay focused. That's why New Year's resolutions fail. Is because people start something they don't want to see it through, and they see something else that's better, and they go jump onto that. And it just it's this never ending cycle of doom. I absolutely love this episode. I love your your acronym. Your seven letters. My 10 letters, I can't spell either of them, but here we are anyway, talking about them. <laughs> um, no, Josh, this was this was a, a fantastic episode. And I really do hope you watching, listening, wherever you are, you go to factor1.io, download the full training. I know I am. I want to check it out. That sounds awesome. Um, Josh, you have so many topics you could talk about. I'd love to have you back on the show. Um, but first things first, what is the next thing when people go to your website and download it? We're going to assume they do that. What is the next thing you want people to do walk away, walking away from this episode? The next thing you should do, like as in right now, whatever it is that you need to do. Okay. This is, this is the easiest thing in the world. Okay. If uh, Brandon and I walked up to you and we said, Hey, let's go on a road trip. Now, aside from the fact that we're two really cool dudes, he will slap you. I will not. So, yes, aside <laughs> so from that, Brandon and I walk up to you and we say, hey, let's go on a road trip. I want you to think about the very first question to come to your mind in response to that. Brandon, what, what do you think would be the first question somebody would ask if we went in and said, hey, let's go on a road trip? I, I would hope it would be, where are we going? Where are we going? You know. I have a 100% success rate on getting the right question when I ask you what that is. Where are we going? 
but not enough of us are asking that question about our business. Where are we going? Because if I walk up to you and I say, I don't know, I don't really have a destination in mind. I figured we would just grab some sandwiches and figure it out. You're not getting in the car with me, man. You got <laughs> other things to do. You're busy. <laughs> and, and so if you walk away with nothing else, you need to ask the question, where am I going with my business? Because if you don't have a clear destination, Disney World is a clear destination. West, not a clear destination. Okay. So if you don't have that clear destination, you need to get one because otherwise that's when you're subject to shiny object syndrome and distractions and starting to do the wrong things that don't work because you can't identify the right things because you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, according to the, the, the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, any road will take you there. That is right. That is the perfect way to end the show for two reasons. One, because since I met you, I have started using that line and it is all credit to you. So you, the listeners, have heard me say that on this show. That came from Josh. Always give full credit. Uh, and the other thing is let's tie this to, har to the harmonious architecture. We talked about you and N a lot. You is ubiquity. That for us is sales and marketing. Those two go hand in hand. And the N is navigation. Everything in the architecture starts with navigation. It is where you're going. It is your compass, the direction for your business. Josh said it. I didn't have to say it. If you know where you're going, you can find ways to get there. If you don't, anywhere will get you there. And of course, ubiquity is always tied to your navigation. So get those two things right. Then you can implement the seven steps to inject cash quickly in your business. But stop falling for shiny object syndrome. Stop being busy. Change that in your phone. Go download Josh's um, his full course on this. And... I'm excited to see you back next time on Harmonious at Lunch. Remember, wherever you are watching, listening, drop it in the comments. What were your takeaways? And be sure to follow along, like I said, so you don't miss this ridiculous show where we disrupt the way you think about your business and we ultimately just want to get you to that next level, wherever that is in your business. We'll see you next time on Harmonious at Lunch.